All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to PC three zero one workshop, and we are ready with the second session of the day. And we have with us uh, Professor Fahad Panodan from Indian Institute of Technology, Hyderabad, and he'll be talking about FPT streaming. So, thank you for joining us, Fahad. Over to you now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, today, I will talk about you know FPT streaming algorithms, and just first. Uh, just quickly recall what is the streaming model in the classical setting and then uh, i will explain uh, uh, fpt streaming okay. so yeah, in the streaming model like the input is so huge it comes like a stream e1 e2 etc up to em so each ei is a token or item or object and we have a very limited memory a b which is much smaller than m and that is only we, we are allowed to use. And at the end of the stream, um, I need to output some function related to the input. Okay. And, and another way of thinking it is like uh, the, the input stream is stored in a tape. And uh, unlike the classical algorithm, in a classical algorithm, you have random access to the input. You can ask, you give me the i to bit. So in the streaming setting, you cannot do that. You can do, you know, a par parsing from left to right. You may do it once, then that is one pass streaming algorithm. You may do it twice, then it is two pass streaming algorithm. So in general, you may do it p times, then it is a p pass streaming algorithm. Okay. And since m is much larger than the memory allowed to use b, uh, at at some point you will not be able to store all the information in the stream in b, but you should store some relevant information in B and at the end you should be able to uh, uh, answer the uh, some questions related to uh, the stream. So if you think in terms of kernelization, in kernelization you have actually the random access to the input and you are going to compute something which is a kernel that is B or is stored in the memory B. And here it is even more restricted, okay? So, so the, you don't have random access to the input. And so you don't have random access to the input, okay? And uh, yeah, but uh, so there are various uh, settings where we will uh, set B in a suitable way, okay? So we'll see it in the next slides, okay? Now, uh, some of the examples you can uh, think of it is like the, the classical examples are like count the number of tokens or at the end of the stream, you need to output M. And that can easily be done in order log m time. And there is like a, a probabilistic uh, counter which approximately count using order log log m. And you could, there are questions like uh, counting distinct items in the stream. So suppose you think these, each of these tokens are numbers and then count distinct numbers in the stream. And for all those problems, we have like something called order log m space streaming algorithm. So using order log m bits uh, space, it can pass from, you know, only once from left to right and output uh, 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 output the answer approximately. That is what the, the first two problems doing. And there is another one, which I would say like the number of tokens, number of the, the, the number of items whose frequency is more than m by k. What is frequency? The number of times one item occur in the street. Okay, and for that, uh, okay. uh, for, for that, uh, you know, you can get a deterministic two pass algorithm uh, with using space order K log M. Okay. Now, now come to the like graph streaming. Okay, so in the graph streaming, like what is this stream? So we need to define that properly, right? So in the graph streaming, what is the setting is, uh, I know that the vertex set and the vertex set is labeled as one, two, three up to N, V of G. Okay. And this I know a priori before the stream starts. And the stream is like the edge stream, E1, E2, et cetera, up to EM. And and then at the end of the stream, we need to output some questions related to graphs, right? At the end of the stream, the graph will be like with this vertex set 
and the edges are given as a string. Okay. And now, like why streams? You know, massive graphs are like like if you look into social networks or web graphs, etc. They are all big graphs, so you cannot store it in your main memory. So you want to work with small memory. So I don't go into motivations at all. Like I guess you are already motivated. So now, so the question is. Uh, uh, so the question is like, uh, with this limited memory, what all graph problems we can solve? Like in this model of computation, what all we could solve? Okay. Now, unfortunately, for most of the graph problems, there is a lower bound known that omega n, which says that even for some basic problem, like given a graph, like the the edges of the graph as a stream, and at the end you want to say is the graph is connected or not. Even for that, a streaming algorithm should take at least uh, should need at least omega n bits. Okay, because of that we cannot get something which is order log m, where m is the number of edges which is upper bounded by n square. Okay, so for most of the problems we cannot get it. Okay? So this actually uh, makes a restriction. So it should go beyond you know omega n. But if I am going to take order M, then there is no point of streaming algorithm. You just store everything in your B and in B you can have random access. Okay? So we want something which, you know, which is uh, using less than little of M space. And the best possible thing, if we have a lower bound of omega N is N poly log N. Okay? And notice that log N is required to you know, remember the label of a vertex. But these are labeled one, two, three, up to n, and this kind of things are called a semi-streaming model. Like you use space, you know, order n poly log n, then that is called a semi-streaming model. Semi-streaming means streaming algorithm, graph streaming algorithm, where the the allowed space is at most n log n poly log n. Okay, and so if you notice, like what what your algorithm should be doing, it will be you know passing the input from left to right and will be storing some information in the B. And at the end, using B, you will be doing some post processing and and solve the problem. So essentially, B is some kind of a sparse certificate. Or like if you are going to store some graph in B, then that will be a sparse graph. The its size will be n poly log n. And so it is also some kind of a kernelization, right? From a dense uh, input, you are going to get a sparse input. Okay. Now, just to quickly see like one example and that we will use later, like it's only 10 minutes. Okay, fine. Suppose, you know, I want to compute the number of connected components. Okay, or like I want to answer the query of is X reachable from Y at the end of the stream. So what we can do is in a streaming setting is maintain a, a spanning forest, okay? That require only order n edges, so n poly log n bits. So whenever an edge comes in, you just check in the, in the, in the forest you have already kept according to the edges E1 to EI minus one. You try to add EI and see whether that is still a forest. If that is the case, you include it in F, otherwise you discard it. And at the end, what you get is a spanning forest and the number of connected components in spanning forest is same as the number of connected components in the original graph. And the reachability question, this is undirected graph in spanning forest and uh, the original graph, they are same. So at the end of the stream, you have a spanning forest that its size is order n poly log n bits. And you can ask this, like you can answer these questions, right? Number of connected components is X reachable from Y. You can answer that question at the end of the screen using that uh, space like B. Okay. And I, I hope that is clear. Like if it is not, you just interrupt me and ask, I will explain more. Okay. Otherwise we will move on to you know some more interesting topics. Okay, now comes to the, uh, yeah, 12 minutes. So FPT streaming model, okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, FPT streaming model. Okay, now I want to, you know, uh, extend the streaming model 
to the parameterized setting. Okay, in a parameterized setting, what is additionally we have? Like we additionally have one parameter, right? And that we expect to be small. And that parameter is some kind of a free to use in space or time, right? Okay, so along with like the input comes as a stream E1 to EM, and we have a fixed parameter given to given to me at the end of at the beginning of the stream okay beginning of the stream itself parameter is given to me and we want to compute we want to answer interesting questions on the input okay and that function may depend on k or like or it may not but then k will have some structures on e like k will depend on some structures on the stream so but even like what i want to say is k is given at the beginning of the stream that is the important thing okay and token is coming and we want to compute the interesting functions on the input again the setting is b is the the space you can use is limited the space b you can use is limited that should not be uh, you know omega m much smaller than that okay now some of the ideal situations we can talk about is like in the case of fpt streaming one is or tilde f of k or, or tilde means there is a polylog and hiding there okay now why why one should think about or tilde f of k f of k because it is parameterized you think k is small so you can take f of k and why the only polylog m because if you look into numerical algorithms which i have explained to you like in the first slide you know counting the tokens or number of distinct elements or heavy hitters they are all using you know order log m bits only or poly log m bits only okay in fact like a lot of numerical problems are there that uses streaming uh, that has streaming algorithms using log m bits so it is natural to you know say that okay in fpt streaming i want you know this one uh but but there will be a problem which says that okay if you go for graph streaming algorithm there already some lower bound non that is omega n okay so because of that okay if you want to solve many graph problem then probably you will be allowing spaces or tilde of f of k m to the 1 minus epsilon for some epsilon greater than uh you know uh, uh zero and ideally what you Thing is like for a graph problem that is like this. This is uh, sorry, it is two minus. Oh no, it is m. Okay, m to the power one minus epsilon. Okay, uh, I okay now for the graph streaming, I will tell you in the next slide. Okay, so so you you can think okay either or tilde of f of k log m like that is one kind for most of the numerical problems in the traditional setting. Polylogam is the case, but for graphs, you know, you ca we cannot get order log m, and hence we say like, okay, now probably we will allow bit more space. Okay. okay. Now, okay, as I mentioned, like one of the example I mentioned there was like, okay, find out all the items in the stream that has frequency at least m by k, and I mentioned that there is a two-pass streaming algorithm that uses, you know. order k log m bits okay and so that is an example of like an fpt streaming where k is the parameter if you notice that is or tilde of f of k f of k is k okay now comes to the graph streaming so there are a lot of graph problems we are interested in so how do we set up an fpt streaming fpt uh, uh, you know streaming algorithm for graph problems as i mentioned i know a priori the vertex set of the graph d and i also mentioned that i know parameter a priori like the beginning of the stream i know parameter k okay? only thing which i don't know uh, at the beginning of the stream is this stream of edges so that comes as a stream and at the end we want to answer questions related to the graph okay? and here we want to use small space okay since we are in the setting of parameterized algorithm so we can use additional f of k space or time uh, okay so let's see and as i already mentioned for many of the classical problems itself omega n is a lower bound for graph problems so so hoping for something f of k 
poly log m which is actually poly log n is not possible the the lower bound extends right so because we think k is very small values so if you look into lower bounds which is proved for that like a substituting k equal to 0 or 1 will extends the lower bound and you will get omega n lower bound okay because of that what we what we aim for is a little of f of k times m space and what is m the total number of edges right that is at most n square and because of that lower bound the omega n what is the best possible we could opt for is like you know f of k n poly log n okay and that we call it as fixed parameter semi streaming algorithm fixed parameter semi streaming so if we don't have this f of k in the classical setting that is semi streaming if you have additional f of k it is fixed parameter semi streaming okay so with that space can we solve interesting problems okay now so and one can actually define various classes it is actually designed in the paper by chitnis at all uh, like in last year so so you say like okay i i either want f tilde of f of k then that class is fixed parameter streaming or like if you want a sublinear and this is for graph problem n to the power 1 minus epsilon factor is there then it is sublinear like say for example square root n where n is the number of vertices and the other you can define is parameter is the semi streaming or tilde f of k n which is what i said before okay and then super linear that is n to the power 1 plus epsilon but you don't want that epsilon to be 1 so epsilon is less than 1 so so these are all interesting settings so if you can get to this that is best if you can get to if you cannot get this then try for this otherwise try for this and many things you can do with this much space that's what we will see like we will see an example for this one and this one okay and another interesting measure or like to to calculate the efficiency of the algorithm is so we only talked about the space so far right so whenever an edge comes in like stick to the graph streaming problem. so edges are coming e1 e2 etc up to em right and then after an edge comes you are going to do some update on your memory b okay so it will take some time that is update time and after you process all the tokens in the stream at the end you have b and to answer the question you will be doing some computation on that what you what you have stored on the memory and that is called the post processing time okay and now so, and in the FPT setting, we ideally want those two time, running times to be f of k times poly, polynomial in n. Okay. That is the, uh, you know, uh, the correct analogous way, right? And we, we, we say that something is fixed parameter semi streaming algorithm. If we have space, which is same as the, you know, parameter is the semi streaming algorithm, that is f of k n polylog in bits and processing time each time update or uh, the post processing it is f of k n to the power order one is there any question in case i'm going fast then you can interrupt me ask and ask questions okay now uh, let us see very simple example so i will not give proof of it i will give only an algorithm for the for it and uh, and it's like analyze its space complexity and running time okay and the proof you can do it, it's like very simple like uh, you have done kernelization for vertex cover so you can think in that direction to prove it so given n and k at the beginning of the stream and uh, notice that i know vertices vertices are labeled one two three up to n and the edges are coming in a stream e1 e2 etc up to em and at the end of the stream, I want the uh, my output is yes if the graph G uh, has a vertex cover of size at most k. Otherwise, it should uh, like my algorithm should output uh, no. And what is the space we are aiming for for this algorithm is actually the first kind, which is O tilde of f of k. So f of k polylog n. 
space or a number of bits. Okay, and here is an algorithm by Chitnis et al. in 2014. So I will initialize a matching M that is initialized to empty set and a, and a set of edges, which is F. Okay? And the edges is coming in streams, right? When an edge E comes in a stream, what you do is you will check whether M union E is a matching. Okay? If that is the case, you add E to M. Also, you add E to F, fine. And otherwise, okay, you check whether the degree of, okay, like you, you are going to store F, okay? Look at the graph induced on F, and in that, what is the degree of U and the degree of V? If one of the, if both of them is less than or equal to K, then you include, uh, you know, that vertex in F. Uh, the, the, that, that vertex, that edge in F, okay? And if one of them is more than, like, like one of them has, you know, degree more than K plus one, then you don't need to include it. You can see the argument here itself, like for that vertex, you know, that edge, one of the endpoint already there are K plus one edges. So you will be picking that vertex anyway. So you can actually forget it, okay? And if there is a matching of size, like if M size is greater than K, that means that matching size is, you know, at least K. So the vertex cover size is at least K, so you can output no and stop, okay? Otherwise at the end, what you do is you solve vertex cover on this graph, okay? B of F, F, F comma K, okay? And you can uh, prove that it's, okay, now, uh, okay. Now, 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 what is the space complexity used here? Notice that the, the end points of the matching is like at most 2K. Okay. And all other edges are, should be incident on one of these, uh, you know, one of these matching endpoints. And I will be like the degree of every vertex here is at most K. So the number of vertices, which is like V of F is actually some order K square. And the number of edges F will also be order K square. And so because of that, the space usage will be like, you know, O tilde of K square. And I will leave out the, you know, the correctness proof for this. You can try to prove it using the knowledge you learned for the kernelization. Algorithm. So this is an algorithm of the first kind, right? Like a, using space O tilde of f of k, f of k poly log m bits. Now we do another example, which is odd cycle transfer. Okay, and it is known that to test whether a graph is bipartite or not, you need omega n. Uh, space for a, you know, to test whether a graph is bipartite or not, you need omega n bits. So I cannot hope for, you know, uh, the kind of space which we did for the vertex cover. So we need to go for a, a, a the best you can do is a FPT semi streaming. So as before, n is given, k is given, it just is coming as a stream. And at the end, I want to say like, okay, if there is a set, an OCT of size at most k, that means there is a set, like that means G minus S is bipartite graph. There is no odd cycle in G minus S, okay? Both are same, right? And so the space allowed here is F of k n poly log m, poly log m is poly log n because m, m is at most n square. Okay? So this is what we are aiming for, okay? Is everything okay? So we will give a one pass randomized algorithm using this space. And with a high, very high probability, my output will be correct. Very high means one minus one by n to the C, but you can choose C. Okay. To define the, uh, to, to, uh, to define my algorithm, I have to talk about something called the bipartite double cover. Okay. What is a bipartite double cover? Okay, I will explain it with this example first, okay? What is a bipartite double cover? Okay, 
let g be a graph now by part a double cover of g is called d of g and in d of g for every vertex u i have two vertices one is white vertex that is u1 and the other is red vertex that is u2 so for every vertex in g i have two vertex u1 u2 u1 is colored say white u2 is colored say red okay and look at okay for every edge u v in g okay i will have edges u1 v2 u2 v1 okay so sup suppose this is v then this is uh, v1 this is v2 so notice that u1 v2 and u2 v1 okay so it is like the edges are between red and white so notice that red and white will give you a bipartition of the graph here you put white here you put red then it is a bipartition because i added edges only like this okay so for any graph g i can construct this bipartite double cover that is d of g and it is a bipartite graph and this is the construction okay i hope it is clear let me know if it is not clear okay now now we are going to uh, now i will explain the algorithm okay so the algorithm is very new this year okay I, i will set a parameter l which is this number you no know, you think that you know some large constant and then k cube log n and then the next is you are going to sample l subset of vertices how you construct vi which is like you you are going to sample vertices and those were the those vertex subsets are called v1 v2 etc up to vl and how vi is constructed vi vj everything is constructed by a same random process okay so vi is constructed as follows okay you toss a coin that comes with a Uh, that comes head with probability 1 by 2k okay like the top and if head comes you include be that vertex in vi so for every vertex you include it in in vi with probability 1 by 2 2k and other like with 1 minus 1 by 2k you don't include it okay so the construction of v1 v2 v3 everything is identical same kind of random process okay so so we have this vertex subsets v1 v2 etc up to vk also fine and define the graph gi to be uh, v of gi uh, sorry g g of vi g of vi the graph induced on the vertex set of vi okay and the di be the double cover of this vi okay just like you have these two copies for every vertex and you added for per one edge you added two edge okay that is what bipartite double coverage okay. so we constructed gi okay now uh, i okay how we do it in a streaming setting that i will explain okay just we have this gi and we have this gi okay and let ti be a spanning forest of di okay and then i am going to construct a graph hi which is as defined as follows okay look at uh, look at the graph ti in ti suppose i have an edge of the form u1 i v2 i okay which means that you know uh, yeah like uh, so ti is a spanning forest of di di is a bipartite double cover so the edges will look like this right so one uh, you know uh, 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 u1 i is a first copy of u1 in in the in the graph gi and v2 i is the second copy of uh, v in the graph gi okay if there is an edge between them like that edge is present in pi you include vu in your v, the, the, then 
then this edge uv that is that will be an edge in your graph g that you add to the graph hi that is the way hi is created okay so hi will have like the vertex it is the whole vertices of g and you add edges like this is this explanation clear like how i am going to construct hi if not i will explain it again so please let me know and maybe what would help is why are we constructing hi this way like what is the role of having a spanning forest ti separate and then using those edges to create hi ah okay so the ti will ti i can construct in a streaming fashion that's why correct so so I, but no, uh, okay yeah using ti to construct hi can you explain that part like ah okay that you, part okay like yeah, why, look at look at the ti the edges of ti how does the edges of ti look like okay u1 i what is u1 i the first copy of vertex u in h in bi like gi the graph gi sorry not in gi bi see look at gi gi has v of gi c equal to v of g okay and for every vertex u i have two copies u1 u2 in di and to make sure that that is a copy there i just wrote i on the top so it has two copies right u1 and u2 and look at the edges in ti that will look like you know u1 i v2 i because the edges are from you know uh, uh, you know first copy to second copy kind of right like like there are no edges from you know u1 to u u1 to v1 so the edges will be of that kind so suppose you 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 find an edge of like u1 i to v2 i in t i okay so then what you do you know that there is an edge in g which is uv okay because if such an edge is not there then you you will not be adding this edge okay and that edge right uv edge that you include in hi so hi has the edge set of hi is defined like this and the vertex set of hi is actually v of g is that okay yes sorry okay so now this i can implement in a streaming fashion okay okay now okay before going into okay now what i am going to do okay i i constructed hi now i am going to solve oct on union of hi what is union of hi union of hi is v of g comma union of e of hi this graph this is called this is what this graph is solve oct on this graph this is a subgraph of g this is a subgraph of g because every edge which is present in hi is a is an edge in g so this graph is a subgraph so now my claim is like you just solve oct on this instance this graph maybe i call it h h is equal to this graph and k is the parameter solve oct on that and based on that answer you say yes or no okay is the steps of the algorithm clear okay now i will explain why we can implement it in streaming fashion but at least the is the steps clear we are random process construct using random process gi is a you know graph you defined as you know graph induced on bi ti and the di is a double cover of it and the ti is a spanning forest of it and from ti you construct hi if some sort of an an edge corresponding to uh, you know a, uh, corresponding to the edges in ti you will be including in hi that is the edges from uh, the actual graph g and then you are going to solve oct on this one so Now, just a moment uh, yeah so sure so far multiple the same vertex can be in multiple mm. vi right like it can be in vi and vj and therefore it can uh, find itself in hi and hj 
so the vertex yeah, yeah. sets of x ray need not be uh, disjoint uh no it need not be disjoint so i i, I said how do i construct the hi hi is constructed from ti to construct the hi you only look into ti correct okay that's fine so when we take the union of hi what we have is bunch of collection of subgraphs and together basically then we are solving oct separately on each of the hi's no no it's a union okay so if one edge is present in h1 and h2 you will be taking only one one of them right. so it's okay, a union okay so if you have multiple you take one okay fine so think that you know okay h1 will give you some set of edges h2 will give you another set of edges h3 will give you another set of edges you take all these edges together and to look at the, that graph why do we need vi can we compute the spanning forest of d uh, double cover of g and construct h uh, okay but uh, the double cover of g you can compute and you can construct h the same way uh but uh, how does that help for solving oct is not clear and no no vi is may not be disjoint okay it is no. like every it's a independent random process v1 using independent random process coin tosses and for v2 different coin tosses but for every vertex you will be doing the coin tosses is the union of edges in hi b union of edge edges in hi may not be v right the set of vertices sorry uh, maybe may like you are mistaken with something else union of edges is a subset of v of g is in case your question uh, like so i i did not understand the intended question like uh, yeah my question uh, was uh, is the union of edges be the edges in g itself uh, or will give it g itself uh the point is it will not give g it in some case it may give g itself okay uh but uh, just look at how many edges are there in hi how many edges are there in pi at most 2n minus 1 yeah uh. okay and there are l such graphs so totally how many edges will be there in the graph h will be okay. l times 2n minus 1 yeah which is actually n polylog n and, and there is a k cube also k cube n polylog n so if your original graph is much more than that you know roughly order n square uh then the, it will not be same but if you oh. you you gave some sparse graph then it could be that Okay. 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 Now, since I said like the number of edges in H is actually, uh, so so we, we have explained here the number of edges in H is order k cube n log n. Okay. So just keep in that. Okay. Now, how I how can I implement it in in a streaming fashion? Notice that VI I can construct. I don't need even a stream. right because it just causing tossing coins okay and now i just need to construct ti which is a spanning forest of gi so i have explained in the in the very beginning how can i construct a spanning forest of a graph if the edges of gi comes as a stream now i can think the edges like edges of gi comes as a stream like whenever an edge e comes in if its both endpoints are in g like if it's both end point u and v are in bi then i can think there are two edges that is u1 i v2 i and u2 i sorry so i can think like there are these edges okay so for every edge in the stream replaced with the two edges for this particular gi and for every gi you can think that okay every edge is replaced with it twice so in a streaming fashion i can make a computation of ti okay so you can try to think about yourself like that is very easy right from gi like if the the edge stream of gi is coming in then i can think like i can construct a ti like some spanning forest of gi okay and the edge stream of gi can be you know simulated from the edge stream of g very easy 
like an edge will be replaced with either zero edges or two edges for gi and we will be using for all the l at, at simultaneously so that way we can implement this in a streaming fashion so i will will not explain more about that but what is the space complexity of my streaming algorithm i only need to keep these ti's okay so to keep these ti's how many edges will be there in ti 2n minus 1 so how many edges i will be keeping all together l times 2n minus 1 that is actually you know the semi streaming number whatever that space limitation is okay and then after do, seeing all the edges from each of these ti i will construct this hi and then construct this and solve the problem okay so the post processing time is also fpt so you you know that oct can be solved in fpt time and the space usage is actually this much and you can think about the update time that will also be polynomial like that will not be even f of k poly n it will be just poly n okay so implementation i have defined okay now why this algorithm is correct okay the forward direction is very easy suppose gk is a yes instance the second one is a yes instance why it's so very quick answer it's a subgraph yeah it's a subgraph it's a subgraph so that's it the important thing is like the reverse direction we want to prove like suppose g comma k is a no instance then this is a no instance this is what we want to prove okay and as i said this like you have seen that you know i'm doing coin tosses at the beginning so things will work only with high probabilities okay so what is the strategy i will say that okay i will prove that okay you take any vertex subset s of size k then there is an odd cycle in h uh in h minus s with probability at least 1 minus 1 by 2 to the uh, sorry 1 minus 1 by n to the 2k so for you fix any vertex subset s of size k then so uh, assume that gk is an no instance then in definitely in g minus s there is an odd cycle so i claim that okay with a high probability in h minus s also there is a uh, there is a odd cycle okay now the number of possible subsets of size k in like uh, of g is n to the k so then by applying union bound what you get is like hk is a no instance with a high probability like 1 minus 1 by n to the k because what is the probability that for a particular s it fail 1 by 2 to the k for one of the s it fail is n to the k divided by n by 2 to the k so that is 1 by n to the k and hence with union bound what you get is like you know for some years you are going to say h minus s is bipartite that probability will be 1 minus 1 by n to the like okay you, you, 1 by n to the k hence the success probability will be 1 minus 1 by n to the k okay okay now so this is what i want to prove so the so the, the moment i prove this step everything is done this is just union bound okay so now next we try to prove this statement fix an s of size k like a vertex subset and want to prove that in h my like there is an odd cycle in h minus s okay and with probability at least 1 minus 1 by n to the 2k okay so as i said fix an s of size k and since g comma k is a no instance there is a odd cycle let c be that odd cycle in g minus s okay. now now first define a graph g prime g prime is as follows okay look at look at the graph g i that is not intersecting with my s okay look at all such graphs so uh, how many graphs i constructed l graphs i constructed 
B1, B, sorry, G1, G2, etc. Up to GL. Look at those graphs which whose vertex set is not intersecting with S. Okay, call it Cal G. Okay, and take the union of those graphs. What do I mean by union of those graphs? Uh, take the union of the edges in those graphs. So, which means that you know G prime has the edge set of G prime is union of I. Sorry. Uh, Q in Cal G, edge set of Q. Okay, so collect all the edges of G I s where G I intersection S B of G I intersection S is empty. Okay, then collect all those edges and that graph is called the G prime. Okay, now now what, well, first what we prove that actually this C this cycle C is present in G prime. Okay, and then we prove that okay because of this cycle present in G prime, uh, there is another odd cycle present in H. Okay, so first we prove that C is present in G prime. Okay, so if if we claim that every edge x y in C is present in G prime, then that cycle is present, right? Every edge x y of C. If that is present in G prime, then that cycle C is present in G prime. So boils down to proving that you know for all edge x y in C, the edge set of C, that x y is present. Okay, is there any question? Uh, yeah, yeah. All, all the statements are with high probability, and the high probability in all these statements imply one minus one by n to the some constant time scale. Okay, Th thanks for uh, pointing out that. Okay, so all these uh, arguments are correct with high probability, and we will uh, I, I will explain that. Okay. Okay. Now, first I will make a claim, and that that claim I will prove later. Okay. What do I say? Like the number of graphs in G. Like look at this Cal G. There are a lot of graphs in. Gi. Okay, the number of graphs in this Cal G is at least you know hundred times k cube times log n. So what is the total number of graphs G1, G2, etc. up to GL, where L is actually two hundred times k cube log n. Okay, so so there are lot of graphs in this uh, Cal G. What is Cal G? Cal G is those graphs. They have no intersection with S. Okay, so this proof we will see. Okay, just assume for the for the uh, for the time being. The probability is very high. One minus one by n to the ten k cube. Okay. Now, now I pick a G i which is in this Cal G. Okay, which means that V of G i intersection S is empty. And What is the probability that okay now I I fix an edge x y in C. What is the probability that x y is not present in like x y is not a subset of V i? That is one minus what is the probability that both x and y belonging to V i? And that is this. And what is the random process of including x in V i? With one by two k probability you are going to include x. With one by two k probability you are going to include y in V i, right? So the probability that x comma y is not a subset of V i is actually one minus the probability that both of them are in V i. Okay, so that is this. Okay, now assuming G is large, that means this. Assuming is x and y are not preserved uh, in in a. a In none of the okay are not preserved in none of the graphs. Okay, assume okay. Cal G is large, but I I, I made that claim okay, and I will prove later. Okay. Look at this x and y. Okay, I say that x and x and y x comma y is preserved in G I if both x and y belonging to uh, G V of G I. Okay. Uh, uh, if at least one of them is not belonging to vi then it is not preserved okay now what is the probability that it is not preserved in none of them okay in all of them it is not preserved okay that is like 
to the power what is the cardinality of gi right in all of them it is not preserved then it is not preserved in calgi and what is that like if you do like e to the power like 1 minus 1 by uh, 2 uh, 4k square is e to the power minus 1 by 4k square and since g calgi is so large you just do that calculation you will get this is you know bounded by 1 divided by n to the power 25k because here there is a k square here there is a k cube so uh, you know one of the k leaves there and the rest of them goes away and in log n n comes back uh, comes to the bottom because of that e power okay. is that fine uh, any question please ask okay okay so what we have proved is fix an x x y sorry fix an x y which is an edge in c that to see that edge is actually preserved in g prime with high probability because if x comma y is preserved in at least one of the graphs like at least one of the graphs then that edge is preserved in that graph gi right so and what is the length of the cycle length of the cycle is at most n okay and what is the probability that you know at least one of the edge in this cycle is not preserved in this g prime that is n times 1 by again just union bound 1 by n to the 25k that will be this okay and and hence what we can say is probability that c is not preserved in g prime like is at most the probability that you know calgi is not large plus so you are going to apply union bound here plus given that g is uh, g is large the probability that c is not preserved okay so that you will be you know summing up this and what is this quantity okay so you sum up those two what you will get is at most 1 by n to the uh, 5k with this means that with the probability at least 1 minus 1 by n n to the 5k c is preserved in gi uh, in g prime what do i mean by c is preserved in g prime so g prime is a union of say some graphs say g i1 g i2 like that okay every edge of that c is present in one of these g i j okay so so that cycle is preserved in g prime now okay now here is the claim okay now look at an edge which is which is the edge in c which is say xy and that edge is preserved in one of these g i j okay look at t i j in t i j i claim that in t i j there is an odd length path from uh you know uh, th 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 there is an odd length path uh from x i1 to sorry x1 copy to y2 copy why because look at the double cover double cover is a bipartite graph and x1 is in one side and y2 is in other side so and and you know xy is connected in in gij so in tij which is the double cover of dij like there is actually edges right in dij there is actually edges between x1 and y2 as well as from x2 and y1 okay and but in the in the spanning forest tij you may not be picking that graph but in the spanning forest the path length will be path length will be e oh, sorry odd because x1 is in the left side and y2 is in the right side okay from that what you can prove is i will not uh, uh, i will not go about that proof using that what you can prove is in hi in hi look hij right in hij there is a path 
there is a path of length uh, odd length path odd length path from x to y okay so what we got for like look at the cycle this is a uh, x y z w like that this is an odd cycle and look at x y instead of x y there is an odd length path in g uh, in in h okay because in suppose this is preserved in h i j then there is an odd length path from x to y in h i j so you take th this odd length path in h i j and from y to z another odd length path and in that cycle there are odd number of edges so there will be a closed walk odd length walk in h okay c implies there exists a closed walk of odd length in h because like yeah like what i i have explained that like every edge for every edge there is a odd length path is preserved in some of the hi okay? and and if i have an odd length walk in hi from that odd length walk in uh, in h from that odd length walk i can extract a odd length cycle in h this implies h contains odd length cycle and that's it okay uh, add sorry h minus s why h minus s because this odd length cycle is preserved in g prime and g prime is the set of vertices uh, g prime is those graphs that is not intersecting with s and hence in h minus h itself like this odd length uh, uh, odd length paths will be preserved and from these odd length paths in h minus s that will be union of these odd length paths will give you a closed odd length walk in h minus s and from that what you get is in h minus s there is a odd length cycle okay and that is the proof like maybe like i have rushed through the last moment like if you have any specific question please do ask me and that's the whole proof and that happens with a high probability because here like with probability 1 my yeah 1 minus this that that event happen like an odd length cycle will be preserved in h and that is what we want to prove for a fixed s okay and then you can do union bound and you will say like with high probability h comma k is an odd instance okay now since there is no time Uh, i will not prove the, the the claim i made here that is this claim but essentially it is applying a chernoff bound it is a simple random experiment and in this random experiment uh, you, you you just uh, you know like you just see what is the probability that this event happen and then you will see that it is happening with very uh, good pro with very high probability and then you are going to apply chernoff bound and then and then you will get that okay so i, I will skip that part the proof of this one calgi like the cardinality of calgi is so high okay? and that is just a simple application of chernoff bound so that that's what explained here so i will not uh, i will not do that due to lack of time and so to conclude graph streaming is still an act like it's an active graph stemi streaming is an active research area like fixed parameter stemi streaming algorithm it's very new lot of opportunities and what we have seen is like you know the edges are coming in a stream that is insertion only like and there is also a notion of you know turn style model which means that okay in the stream like in the i token you are going to say like okay delete the edge which we have seen before like some edge e i which you deleted okay so that is called like we allow deletions as well and the both the algorithms i explained there is a 
you know the same kind of steps but using a different approach uh, things will work and and it will it will go very difficult when you go for turnstile model uh, because even for connectivity in the turnstile model it is very uh, you know not as simple as what we saw here and now how do we prove so i mentioned that you know for most of the graph problems omega and lower bound exist so there is a lower bound machinery and in fact it's, you know we can incorporate these parameterized settings as well and we can prove lower bounds and notice that these lower bounds are not conditional lower bounds they are you know lower bounds without any conditions and with that i will stop i mean any question